Okay. So uh, we just had two somewhat longer talks. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a shorter talk uh, covering a bit of the uh, vector extensions and SIMD and RISC-V world. Uh, this is kind of about how we're trying to get scalable vectors into Rust. Uh, full disclosure, I did not file the RFC for this. I'm just uh, some very talented people at ARM did that. Uh, I'm just doing the RISC-V part of this. Um, so my name is Gijs Burgern. I am uh, I go online by Coastal White, uh, and I'm starting my PhD here in Delft uh, next week. So um, also doing Risk Five stuff. So uh, I think a lot of you will have heard of Risk Five. It's kind of this open instruction set, which is trying to be a bit more create a bit more transparency and be easier to implement uh, for students and this kind of stuff. Uh, in general, it's trying to do a lot of things, and it's being used in the embedded world. It's being used now in AI accelerators and GPUs. You can even buy like uh, these kind of chips. <laughs> They're very small. They're five euros, and they run Linux on dual core. So it's kind of insane what you can do nowadays. Uh, kind of the problem that RISC-V had is that it didn't really have a SIMD extension or a standardized SIMD extension. Uh, and they kind of solved this earlier this year by ratifying the uh, risk five vector extension, and it really tries to draw a lot of lessons from uh, Intel and from ARM, and it's loosely based on uh, the ARM scalable, uh, scalable vector extension, uh, where in comparison to if you would look at Intel, which some of you might be uh, like a bit familiar with, where you have really defined vector sizes, so you have AVX, 2, 5, 6, uh, here you have per core defined register sizes. And that will seem very weird, uh, but you will ask the processor at runtime what you, uh, how many elements you want to operate on. And then the processor will say, okay, actually I can only operate on this many elements. All the next uh, few operations will use this many elements. And you just keep looping until you have all your elements done. Uh, and that means that all your implement, all your code will always be agnostic to your vector register size. And this has a few big uh, advantages. So first of all, you can write your code once and it will run on the embedded uh, chip and on the um, server chip or the AI accelerator chip. As long as they both have the vector extension, they will run the same code and they will use the full capacity of that vector register. Uh, and this also works over time. So now we might have relatively small vector registers, but in the future, you might have bigger and bigger and bigger vector registers and the same code will still work and will still use the maximum capacity. And this is the problem that Intel is running into where they have to re-release a new vector extension or a SIMD extension every few years because the SIMD registers keep growing, uh, which is kind of difficult to deal with from an ISA perspective. Um, so we have been able to generate the instructions belonging to this extension uh, implicitly for a bit now, but we kind of want to uh, generate them explicitly as well for certain crates. For example, the regex crate, they did some SIMD overhaul a few weeks ago for ARM, uh, speeding up the Apple uh, implementation and uh, using explicit SIMD instructions kind of sped it up by around eight, uh, eight times, which is kind of crazy. So you can imagine that this can lead to a lot of performance gains. Uh, so let's look very quickly at how this kind of looks when you look the, when you use these scalable vectors. So this is kind of the general shape you will have. Uh, usually we'll have like an outer loop. And in this case, we're just calculating the maximum bytes out of the whole array. So we have this array X and it has the length here. Uh, well, the first thing we always do in our loop is we request from the processor to operate on that amount of bytes, and then you will uh, you, it will give you back, okay, actually I can only operate on this many bytes. Uh, and then we load uh, that amount of bytes and we uh, reduce and we find the maximum within that amount of bytes. And we just keep looping until we are through all our bytes. So this is actually quite easy. If you consider how SIMD like works on other platforms, you need like a prelude to deal with offsets and like weird alignment constraints and this kind of stuff. And this is just, one loop, uh, and it will like on. If you have very big register sizes, it might loop once. If you have very small register sizes, it might loop multiple times. You don't know, 
but it will always accommodate every like every uh, platform with the vector extension. So we're trying to implement this kind of flow in Rust, uh, but there's kind of a major problem. And that is that if you want to generate like a type that holds the value for such a register, you have to, uh, like this is kind of the most intuitive thing to do. Like you want to keep, make it, uh, like give it a byte slice, which is you don't give it a predefined size at compile time because you don't know the size at compile time. Uh, but we have this trait in Rust, which is, it's called sized. It's kind of necessary for a lot of stuff you're doing in Rust. Uh, if you want to hold a variable that uh, that is of some struct, it needs to be sized. If you want to pass a variable in a, as a function parameter, it needs to be sized. If you want to make it a return type, it needs to be sized. Uh, but this type is not sized. So you actually you essentially can't do anything or like anything useful of it. You need to put it behind a reference and huge slices behind references or vector registers behind references doesn't seem like a very nice idea. Um, so we need to kind of build in like some weird me uh, mechanism to let the Rust compiler deal with this. Uh, and this is kind of what we're doing. Uh, and we have a prototype that's running. So we have some examples that are running at the moment. We we can generate code that uses this, but it's very flimsy. And we're using a lot of experimental features at the moment. Um, but we have code that's running, <laughs> so that's very good. But we still have a lot of fundamental issues, and it really needs to be resolved in the RFC before we actually start standardizing stuff into the actual Rust compiler. I hope that will be the eventual state of this. Uh, and personally, I am quite far underway with the risk five intrinsics. Uh, there's a lot of them. The C implementation has around 20,000 of them. Uh, I hope I won't have to implement 20,000 instructions, but that's uh, uh, but in the long run, I think this can really decrease the maintenance burden of this kind of code. Uh, in general, you can think of when ARM starts doing the same thing, you can kind of create a wrapper around both and it will be reasonably the same. Um, and it can really increase risk five adoption. So not only risk five adoption in general, it can kind of couple risk five and uh, Rust together, similar to how risk five and Wasm are kind of coupled now. Uh, and this vector extension, which is like, uh, it's kind of really cool if you look into how it is implemented, uh, it can also increase the adoption of this. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if we have time for questions. Uh... Yes. We're technically two minutes behind schedule, so I'd say we have a little bit of time for questions. So I'll. Uh... <laughs> I'm now I'm organizing, but I do have a question as well. Um, <laughs> so. I'm guessing you did go with these like unsized types, right? Or th yes. that is what you went with. How does this play together with like async code? Because you don't, you can't really have async or uh, unsized locals in async stack frames, right? Or how do you, yeah, how, like, does the, the, how do these go together? So at the moment, I, I will tell you this much. It's just a bunch of exceptions in the Rust compiler. Like we just say, we allow unsized types in as variables. We allow unsized types as function return types. Uh, I think for async, it's going to be a complete mess as well. Um, like it, there's a lot of things to deal with, and I think especially if you, I'm I'm not very much involved in the async world, so I'm I can't comment specifically on this. But I think we need people also from the async world to look at this and like see. Okay, how can we deal with these specific issues for, for there? I see. Uh, yeah, so this was actually also my question, kind of uh, how do you deal with uh, not knowing the size if you yeah, are implementing, yeah. asking things. Uh, but yeah, does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, Agav, let's go. Um, so I'm very interested in using just the vector extension. It looks very fun and 
Uh, I've done a lot of SIMD programming with Intel and it's hell. So this sounds like not good. <laughs> um, but with Intel, there's a really good database about performance characteristics, right? I can look up and find out for this CPU, for this intrinsic, uh, you know, I know what the performance characteristics are. I know whether or not I should be using these. And I think that'd be really important if you want to do explicit intrinsics with RISC-V. So do you know of any resources for finding that sort of information? So no, <laughs> it is, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, this extension got ratified somewhere in July, June, July. So it's very fresh. Like it, it changed quite a lot since like when they first drafted it. So there are some things even implementing like the not ratified uh, chip. I think even this chip implements the like the version 0 0.7 or something of the of the extension, which is now completely not used anymore. Um, but no, at the moment, no. Uh, I have actually been looking myself at like trying to a bit consolidate this this risk five documentation because it's really scattered everywhere. Uh, the specifications are pretty good, but they don't do justice for performance and like co like coding with risk five essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, are there any more questions? Um, I don't know if we have time for another one. Okay, a quick one. Uh, how does it integrate with uh, RFC for standard library SIMD? For the so for the SIMD, the yeah, okay. So uh, currently, that already generates these instructions, but it uses uh, LLVM stuff. So LLVM has like a general thing for SIMD stuff. So it can already generate this these things, but uh, that one is really optimized for fixed size uh, registers. So it the code it generates looks very weird. Like it's it's not at all like you would want to program this specifically. Um and like I, I don't know the people involved in there, but uh I think it's gonna be a problem for that for that project as well because ARM is now now has their own extension for this. Uh I even heard some rumors that Intel is moving a bit towards this direction as well. But it's kind of like, I don't know, like it's kind of difficult. Like you would want, this is, I think this is probably a nicer way to program, but that's, uh, that's the whole process of standardizing the way we do SIMD is really based on fixed size registers. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut it off there. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for your questions. Um,